They are visionaries. They are irrepressible creatures of the world. They are passionate and compassionate soul winners and excellent growers of the church. Anything that I do, my aim is to please God. As a result of that, I tried not to fear anybody. The faith that I had held on to, I'm not going to cheat. I will hold on to it mm. till the very end. Mm. We must pray sincerely that Jesus should increase while we decrease. It is for Christians to celebrate the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And that cavalry is a point of victory for us. They are our retired and highly reverend primates, archbishops and bishops of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Even though they are out of office, their good works speak loudly and eloquently for them. Reminences aim to celebrate the lives, times and works of these legends whose impacts are evident in the phenomenal growth of the church across Nigeria, Africa and the rest of the world. Welcome to Reminences, celebrating our icons, connecting with our past. Good day uh, viewers and welcome to this uh, program called Reminences, which is a program where we uh, celebrate our icons and legend who have impacted in the growth of the world, the church, and the nation as whole. And uh, it's actually a program that brings out uh, past experience of our great leaders. And so I'm starting this episode with uh, our father in the Lord, uh, who most of us know as the Dean Emeritus uh, of the Church of Nigeria, the most reverend Adebola Ademowo. On this program, I'm sure you are going to uh, be very educated about his life and uh, past experiences. Your Grace, it's good to see you, sir. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, well, somebody said you don't look over 70. <laughs> and uh, I can testify to that you are looking fresh. How are you doing, sir? I thank God All right. for what the Lord is doing. Thank God, sir. The glory goes to, to God, God Almighty. Mm. Thank you, sir. Now, Your Grace, um, let's us know um, what happened significantly when uh, you were giving birth to. I mean, was there any experience that your parents told you happened at your birth? We thank God for what the Lord has done in the past. Mm and for what he's doing at the moment, and for what he will do in the future. Mm -hmm. I must say that my father was a veteran headmaster in Lagos here for many, many years. Mm -hmm. There was a time we were staying in Shomolu, and then we moved to Mushi. And from there, we came to Ibutemeta. Mm -hmm. When we were in Shomolu, we were given a Spartan training. Mm -hmm. My father wouldn't spare anyone. He will, he will tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. And if you don't do it, unlike now when people don't cane their children anymore, mm -hmm. He gives you assignments and tells you from this page to this page, you read it. And when I'm back, he's going to withdraw that book from you and then ask you to tell him what you have read. Mm -hmm. If you are not able to tell him, then you are in soup. Mm. <laughs> and your tenses must be flawless. Mm. If it is past tense, it has to be past tense. Mm. If it is past participle, it has to be. Mm. And there were occasions when he would tell us, you have to trek to school. And then from Shomulu, I will have to trek to Ibutimeta St. Jude's. No, not because there is no car. Well, he wasn't having any car. Okay. But maybe cash flow problem. Okay. I wouldn't know. But it okay. tells you today you have to trek. <laughs> and that means that, or that meant that from Shomulu you get to the market, Shomulu market, and then you get to the front of Ibubi College, mm. then you get to Jibu, 
and pass in front of the Yaba College of Technology, okay. pass in front of um, the University of Lagos, and then get to uh, Sabu, branch to the left, mm. pass through Akiumi, bust out around Casino Cinema, mm. and then get to Petty Street, Freeman Street, then you are in St. Jude's. Mm. But when you are coming back in the afternoon, mm. you're going to feel it because it's very hot. <laughs> yeah. And the type of canvas shoes that we put on there, mm. once you are walking, is terribly hot. Mm. But all I want to say is that all these were part of the training that we had in those days. No. And it has paid off. Hmm. Okay, so uh, uh, now let's get uh, why before these experiences uh, uh, were, were there anything that when you were very small uh, maybe before uh, growing up to be able to trek uh, how, do, how does your parents what are the remarkable things that you remember that your parents does well, my, my father, apart from this pattern training, yeah. he gives every situation a human face. Mm. He was doing all this just to put us on the right track. Mm. He wakes you up in the morning, five o'clock, for morning prayer. Mm. And he's not going to call you many times. Bola, only once. <laughs> and if you are lucky, he may call you twice. Aye. And you must be up. Hmm. Otherwise, he's going to use cane to bring you up. <laughs> and all those things, I'm sure, added a lot to our upbringing. Hmm. You don't go out in the night. Hmm. You're supposed to be home in good time. Hmm. And when it is time for you to be at your books, hmm. you must be there. Hmm. And then he will check all your books he doesn't want to see the exercise book tattered. He wants to see everything in good shape. Mm -hmm. And then he's going to go through it. When your result is out, he's going to check it. That alone will keep you on your toes. Mm -hmm. And that has assisted us mm -hmm. a lot. Uh, so it seems he was a Christian? Oh, a Christian. And a Christian, the same thing, my mother. Okay. And he tells you, you must be at the choir practice in the church. And you must be at the boys' brigade uh, practice. Mm. And when you are back from the church, he's going to ask you, who did the preaching? Mm. What was the text of the sermon? Mm. He's going to ask you the kernel of the sermon. You must be able to remember what you heard in the church. Mm. I believe all these assisted yes. us mm. tremendously. Mm. Mm. Now, uh, you know, in the Southwest, uh, a lot of people believe that uh, some family grew up as uh, a Muslim background. Uh, have you ever fancy any other religion apart from the one your parents brought you up with? No, but I don't have the right to cast aspersion mm. on other religions. Yeah. But I would say that my grandfather yeah. hailed from Ijebudi mm. and he was a farmer okay. and went to an area to farm and became the first lay reader in that area. Okay. But our uh, background came from Ijebudi there, and that is mm -hmm. where I now have a house. Okay. Uh, because Kabi is here with Jale, who want me to have a house there. And <laughs> he's named a street after me, mm. and I love to go there. Mm. Beautiful place. <laughs> so at what point, uh, because it's always good that um, you were in church, maybe by, by force of your parents' uh, uh, discipline. 
At what point did you really give your life to Christ? In 1968, yes, there was what we call the Keswick Convention that was taking place at St. Jude's Church, in Butimeta. Mm. And they came there to organize it, and it was just super. And that was when I gave my life to Christ. And that very year, I did confirmation. Okay. Bishop Kale came to do it. I couldn't sleep all night because I was looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. And he did it. And then I was, after secondary school, I was working with the Ministry of Health as a clerical officer. And then I received the call to become a priest, to go for training. Mm -hmm. In actual fact, I did mention to my vicar at St. Jude's, who was also an archdeacon. Mm -hmm. But you know, young people were sometimes frivolous. So when I waited and he was not giving me the form, mm -hmm. I left our office and went to Marina where you have the palace, mm. and I pressed the button, and the chaplain to the Bishop of Lagos, Encho Smith, Reverend Encho Smith, mm. the man was an Englishman, okay. and he thundered from there to inquire who was pressing the button. So I gave my name, and the man just opened the door. I was taken aback because it was, <laughs> maybe fourth floor, and it opened from there, and mm -hmm. the door opened, mm -hmm. and I went up, and he then asked me, what do you want? I told him I want to be a priest. He looked at me and said, can you give me your full name? And I did. Mm -hmm. And then he asked me to write it out and typed it on a typewriter, asked me to confirm whether what he has typed is yes. correct. Mm. So he now asked me that he would send my form to my vicar. Mm. So he filled in my name and sent it to the vicar. The vicar was angry. <laughs> he was visibly angry. And he mm -hmm. felt that this young man, mm. he went and met the chaplain, who is a junior officer to him, mm. and that in itself is an offense. Yeah. Mm. So he, he sent the sexting to go and tell me to come and see him. Mm. So the sexting came because the sexting knew our house, 101 Lagos Street, a mm -hmm. and then told me that you are in trouble. The <laughs> vicar is angry with you. Mm. So I... I didn't know what to do. I was a bit confused. So I told him that I will, I will come mm. because he said the vicar asked him to fetch me. I said mm. I will come. Mm. So I left her house and went to 68 Jeba Street where the curate was living mm. and that's Reverend Saka. Mm. He has just come back from Sierra Leone. So I narrated to him what has oh. happened. And he said, that's not a problem. The vicar will just be waking up now. When you get to the house where the vicar is living, the house is um, the floor, is wooden floor. Mm. And the staircase is wooden staircase. When you are climbing, mm. you will know definitely someone is coming up. Mm. And the man usually will sit just by the side of the door to his room. As soon as you climb up and he sighted you, you prostrate. <laughs> and as you move towards him, midway, prostrate again. And when you get to him, prostrate the third time. And let's see what's going to happen. So by the time I religiously carried out his instruction, by the time I got to the man, he was, <laughs> he just said, you shouldn't have done what you have done, but now that you have done this, mm. 
I'm no more angry with you. Mm. Take this form, go and fill it, and return it. Mm. So I returned the form to him, and he now recommended me. Mm. And then I had to go and face the panel of interviewers at Marina. Elderly people with gray hairs, <laughs> citing them alone, you will just become a jelly. You will melt. Mm. So it was the chaplain, that white man, that was telling me, just calm down. Don't, don't, just answer the questions they're asking you. <laughs> he saw me through, and from there I now went to Emmanuel College, and then I was... I had the written examination and the interview. Mm. It will normally last for four days. Mm. And after that, I was given admission. Wow. And when I finished, it used to be that when you finish, the diocese has sponsored you, you go back there. Okay. So during our own set, one evening, I was told that your bishop is around, Bishop mm. Kale, and he used to ride one limo, okay. himself and the bishop of Ondo, Bishop of Kusaya. Mm. So I went in my Christmas best, wanting to greet him, and also to have a look at the limo. <laughs> you know, young people were very inquisitive. Yeah. So I went there. As I was trying to admire the limo, the, the bishop was coming, they finished with their meeting. Mm. And he saw me, he didn't know me anyway. Mm. And then I greeted him, introduced myself, I'm from Lagos Diocese. And he said, oh, yes, there's a new arrangement that we have just, we've just decided on a new modus operandi of distributing you people. Mm. That you are from the Diocese of Lagos does not mean you are going back there. Mm. And he said, your names will be arranged alphabetically. Mm. Number one, Lagos. Number two, Ibadan, and so on. And I happen to be number two. <laughs> so I was looking at him, and then he said, I wish you all the best of luck. Mm. And I wasn't myself because I suspected I may not be coming back to Lagos. Lagos. So mm. I went back to my room, dejected. Mm. At the end of the day, the distribution list came out and I was posted to Ibadan. <laughs> and the Bishop of Ibadan posted me to Elisha. At that time, Elisha was still oh, part no. of Ibadan diocese. Wow. And I got to Elisha and met Venerable Falokwe John Adigbe Ibitayo Falokwe. He later became a bishop. Wow. And I was his chaplain for six years. Wow. So I got there and he said, young man, I've been waiting for you. I had a small box, this carton of milk containing mm. my books. He said, I've been waiting for you. And he said, work has started. So he asked me to follow him. <laughs> and I followed him. And we got to a flat. And he said, this is your flat. I've been trying to supervise it. I was taken aback. Mm. Supervise a whole archdeacon supervising my flat. And he said, that dining table, the positioning of it, mm. if you are not satisfied, you can change it. You have three rooms, wow. and anything you need, just let me know. And then he told me, you are a bachelor for the next three months. Don't cook. Just report morning, afternoon, evening for your meals. <laughs> I couldn't believe. I could not believe. Mm. Anytime he sent me on an errand, he asked me to take his 4-4. Um, <laughs> Whereas, when I was on holidays, mm. I wanted to see the Addicting of Lagos then. And the secretary told me, I said, I'd like to see the Addicting. He said, are you on appointment? I said, no. Uh -uh. 
So the, uh, do you think you can just bump on the archdeacon? Okay. Hmm. And this lady did not allow me. Hmm. Now this is another archdeacon hmm. who is Oops. ready to take care of me. Hmm. And he said, all the training you have received, I'm going to retrain you. And he took me to the church and said, this is where you sit every Sunday. When the service is on, you don't start to look about. It's a solemn service. And if you are having anything to read, you start to prepare from Monday. If you are reading in Yoruba language, you first read in English to have an idea. And your reading must be impeccable. So most of the things I do today, that Baba gave everything to me. Mm. In the area of generosity, mm. in the area of being given to details, mm. he was meticulous to a fault. Mm. When he writes, you can never see him crossing anything there. It has to be perfect. And then, after two years, I went to the University of Ibadan, and he told me, then he became the bishop in 1974. I got there in 72. Okay. 74, he became the bishop. Of Elisha? Of Elisha. Okay. The place was carved out okay. as a new house. Okay. And he said, you're going to be my chaplain, because mm. I don't want to have IBP. <laughs> so I'll come from Ibadan to chaplain him mm. and clear my table and he was training me and so on. Mm. I really, really enjoyed Elisha, Ijesha land. Mm. So when he retired, Bishop Olajide came. Mm. And when Bishop Olajide came, he asked me to be in charge of the clergy school. Okay. He gave me like eight assignments. Mm. I was in charge of the theological education by extension program. I was in charge of the youths. I was chairman of the youth work board. I was secretary to the board on evangelism okay. and so on and so on. Leadership training and so on. Mm. So I was doing all this, but as um, in charge of, as a person in charge of um, clergy school, yeah. if you are not there, I then give a query on behalf of the bishop, mm. and then say, for the past two days, we didn't see you. Could you explain to the bishop why you are not here? You are not here. So one day, all the Adikins, they assembled and called me and said, you are an Adikin like us. You are going beyond your bounds. <laughs> you issuing queries and all this. And I told them, I don't owe you any apology. This Adikin, he will sneak out. What example is he setting for From others? I so said, you should just reply and give it to the bishop. So when they got to their churches, our members who asked them, how did it go? They said, ah, Ademowo is now behaving like a bishop. Who <laughs> he's giving us query. He's doing this. He's doing that. And the members will be saying, ah, how come? Mm. Say so that's what we are experiencing. They then went round. They thought they were maligning me. Mm. Then our bishop was translated to Ibadan. And these same people, they started to gossip <laughs> to say, that man that used to give them query, even as an archdeacon, mm. may be good as our bishop, mm. if he's able to handle them. Mm. That's nice. Mm. And they were saying it. I didn't even know they were praying. Mm. And the advisory committee now wrote to say they want a bishop who is evangelical. Baba mm. Falokwe, evangelical. Baba Lajide, evangelical. 
They want an evangelical bishop. Mm. And providentially, I was not even thinking of uh, anything. I became the bishop of Elisha. Wow. And I was their bishop for 11 years. And in all, 28 years, I was in Elisha. So uh, how, did the, how did the news of becoming the bishop came to you? I mean... Yes, the Papa de Tiloe was the primate. Okay. And he wrote me a letter with long hand because they won't type it so it doesn't leak. Mm. And he wrote and said, at the meeting of the Episcopal Synod held at St. Peter's Church, Enugu, Abakaliki Road, okay. you have been elected Bishop of Elisha. Please pray about it if you want to accept mm that responsibility or not. or not. So he gave it to one of his drivers. And the driver now got to the vicarage. I was archdeacon of Ijebujisha. And he gave it to someone in the house to give it to me. I was upstairs. I opened it. I was flabbergasted. Mm. I was torn into pieces. I didn't know what to say, what to do. I just sat there like a log of wood looking <laughs> blank. <laughs> then I sent for mommy. Mommy came, had a look. She was so, so confused. Mm. And we sat there. After a long time, it now dawned on me that that poor driver was still waiting. <laughs> so I then managed to come downstairs to greet him and then to ask him where is Baba and he said he's in Udowa, his hometown. So that very night we went there mm -hmm. and immediately he saw me and said, how did you feel? I said, the shock is just too much, sir. He said, it happened to me too. Mm. I had a shock for a long time. So I told him I'm praying on it and then I will bring the letter. So after some days, I now brought the letter of acceptance and he was waiting for when to announce it. Mm -hmm. But we usually run away from Ijeshaland. We'll come to Ijebu. And uh, one day we were there and we saw the Bishop of Ijebu, Papa King, tell me. Mm. And he said, you always run into this place. The thing is in Concord. Today, it has been published. That was 26th of December. That anything has been published to 1988. <sighs> mm -hmm. So we then decided to come back. By the time we got to Ijebu Jesha, it was in the dead of the night. The whole place was crowded. Hmm. Even for us to come out of the car was a big Akulian task. And that was how we started. Hmm. But we must thank God. 11 years, I was their bishop. The Jesha people, they are a no-nonsense kind of people. Hmm. They call a spade a spade. I love them to a fault. Mm. And if I go there at 2 a.m., I'm at home in the night. <laughs> I'm at home. I'm at home. Good mm. people. Mm. Thank you, Your Grace. And uh, I'm sure, viewers, you've been uh, very related with these storylines. And uh, we are not done yet. Uh, we just want to take a break and we're we'll back after this short break. Stay tuned. Postfire is a program that treats controversial topics on diverse issues surrounding the church and the society. Technology drove the inflow or the outbursts of people having violence because of printing technology. Same way the digital revolution has also made it possible for people to have Bibles in various formats in their hands. As an African, I believe in Africanism. 
And Anglicanism is standing on the tripod of scripture, tradition, and reasoning. When we are about to read the Holy Gospel, all members will be made to stand up. Assuming the gospel are read from the phone, and it says this is the gospel of Christ, you are likely to confuse a lot of people. Because people will be seeing food in your hands. In the history of Holy we've Communion, sir, we've never heard that, that somebody think, contacted the deeds from the other person. I think, sir, the, the, the truth is that when people are gathered together and anything happens, whether it is an earthquake or it is a disease or anything, it spreads faster and there are more fatalities. That's just what I'm talking about. The first evangelist in the Bible was a woman, the woman of Samaria that Jesus met at the well. Immediately, this woman met Jesus. She went into the town and started telling everybody that come, come and see somebody who told me everything about myself. The women actually supported the ministry of Christ, supported the ministry of the apostles, but they were never called apostles. Alright, it's been good talking with uh, the most reverend Adebola Demo, the immediate past Bishop of Lagos, Archbishop of Lagos Province, and the Dean Emeritus of the Church of Nigeria. Uh, Your Grace, it's been nice speaking with you. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. Tapping very much. from a uh, wealth of experience and uh, your storyline. Uh, uh, but but one want to ask, uh, what actually led you to becoming a priest? Because uh, most young lads mostly doesn't want to become a priest. Uh, was it something that you had in mind from onset or you found uh, your way to becoming a priest? As I did mention before, I was a clerical officer with the Ministry of Health. Mm. But I must say that my upbringing, because we were always in church, yeah. and I got close to Reverend Sakar, okay. who came back from Sierra Leone, yeah. and he had his own way of living. The wife is Sierra Leonean, okay. and very, very nice man. Mm. And I started to have a feeling that I love to be a priest. priest. Okay. Even though my friends, they would um, cast as passion <laughs> and say, oh, priest. And by the time I was taken to Elisha, they were talking at me. Ah, mm -hmm. Sorry, oh, it's Elisha <laughs> that they took you to. <laughs> From and Lagos. all that mm. from Lagos. Mm. In fact, there was a time um, I was to be provost of St. James's Cathedral in the Pardon. But that was not to be. Mm. Um, uh, because later the primate, Ulufosui, felt that they must speak from within. Okay. Even though I scored 12, the other person scored 2. Mm. But he wanted someone from within, mm. and that was not to be. And there was a time my bishop wanted me to come to Lagos, mm. and he told me that uh, Bishop Shegun wanted me to be chairman of a Papa DCC. And I prayed about it. I felt no. I didn't know Bishop Shegun, so I, I, I I wasn't convinced. Mm. I didn't accept it. Mm. So uh, becoming a priest, I strongly believe it's, it's a kind of urge that I was having within me. Okay. And I then felt I must obey the call. Mm. Yes. Now, now uh, you have been regarded as a prince. Uh, are you from a royal family? I wouldn't say that. Mm. I, I know that my father, when he retired, okay. once told me that he would like to be a ballet. Okay. And I tried to dissuade him from doing so. Um, I know that our root is Jebodi, but mm. my grandfather went to farm in a village and then became like... Um, 
the benefactor. Okay. So he said he would like to be the ballet. And I said, please don't put yourself in trouble. Mm. But he went ahead. I was ballet there for some time. Okay. I think in those days, when you are ballet of a village, they give you the shakole. Mm. Um, there are things that are cruel That's to it. you. <laughs> I asked him, is it because of that? He cleverly said no, but I suspected <laughs> something was coming to him. <laughs> 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 and I must say that um, my ministry in mm. Elisha mm. is incomplete without mentioning the enormous role played by mommy, my wife, mm. uh, because she stood by me like the rock of Gibraltar. We used to go into villages mm. to do evangelism. Mm. There was even a day we went and just two pieces of a uh, log of wood on the river. And I was trying to maneuver and the tire just went the other way. Mm. It's the villagers that came to rescue us. Wow. And it was, we would go, because when I first came, I was posted to the cathedral. St. John's, Cilicia, it mm. wasn't a cathedral then. Mm. And in 1974, it became a cathedral. So when I finished in the university in 1977, okay. The bishop posted me there. Okay. And I was there for some time. Then he posted me to St. Peter Sishono mm -hmm. um, towards the end of 1977 to be the vicar. And that church, it was like starting from the scratch because tornado had blown off the roof mm -hmm. of the church building. We okay. had to do it again. And there was no vicarage. We were living far away. And we worked assiduously to ensure that we re-roofed and then we built the vicarage. Mm -hmm. And we were there for seven years. Uh, we got married in 1976. But there's one interesting story okay. about that. Um, I was in Imane College and the first year, after my first year, I came to Papakintayo. Okay. who was chairman of um, Lagos Suburban District Church Council. And he was based in St. Jude, so do you know, And he posted me to All Saints, so should he, okay. for three months. And I was there, so he did very well. That Baba was a disciplinarian, and mm. I loved him to a fault. The students, they were telling me not to go to him. <laughs> that that Baba, he will put pepper in your eyes. I said, the more reason why I will go there. Mm. And it turned out to be a good training for me. Mm. And the following year, I did my vacation job in St. Paul's Church, Ibori, okay. um, where um, Canon Oloni, your later venerable Oloni, and he later became Bishop of Ife, was okay. the vicar. So I was with him, and then the principal of Imane College sent us a letter mm. to say, I know you have interest in evangelism. I want you to go to Ekiti and do some revival there. And then I know you'll be resuming a week when others might have resumed but I'm going to permit you. So I took the letter to my vicar and told him, I'm on my way to Ikiti. And he said, no, you can't go. If you go, I won't pay you. So I told him I don't mind because this is God's call. Mm. So when he then discovered that I had started to pack my things and I had resolved mm. to go, mm. he then allowed me. And at the end of the day, he paid me. Mm. So I got to Adwekiti for the first time. And the provost, Provost Fame, who an elderly man, looked at me and said, OK, I'm going to post you to Iworoko, which is not too far from Adwekiti. So I was posted there. Mm. And I was in that Iworoko 
the man in that church happened to be the father to mommy. Okay. And mommy came on holidays from Ibadan. Hmm. So I was doing evangelism and I discovered she has some flair for evangelism. And I was watching. And then I was deciding in my mind that this girl may be good mm. for my ministry. So I would, in addition to evangelism, to the assignments you have, <laughs> teach her for. in geography okay. and English. Okay. And Papa showed interest. He didn't know I have my own hidden agenda. <laughs> So I will be teaching geography, <laughs> Nimbus Cloud, <laughs> and so on. Mm. And that made Baba to be interested mm. in Cumulus Cloud. <laughs> and he will be asking me, what are all these you are teaching? <laughs> and then one day I told Papa that the next village, I will want to go there. Can she go with me? Mm. And Papa said, why not? So we were going, and I would be here, and she would be there. So I was trying to proverbially say some things, but she wasn't picking. Hmm. So when we now finished the assignment, I went back to Ibadan. So I now wrote a letter to her to say, I have been saying some things proverbially, but it looks as if you didn't pick. I need to put in writing. This is my intention. Mm. And I'm convinced. She then wrote back to say, my parents at this particular point in time will want me to study. I'm not even thinking of what you are saying. And if I'm going to think of anything like that, mm. it's going to be in 10 years' time. I was enraged. <laughs> I was angry, visibly angry, mm. and felt, ah, there are many people in this uh, world. <laughs> Why is she becoming impossible? Mm. So I put pen to paper and wrote a stinker <laughs> to say, if a door closes, another one will open. Mm. As I was just about putting that letter in an envelope. Mm. An elder, elderly man who is um, one of my friends in the college just okay. knocked at the door, mm. came in, and said, what's happening? Your facial appearance is not attractive. You mm. looked worried. Yes, I said, it's one girl that is trying to dare me. I said, <laughs> dare you? Say yes, I've written a letter. Mm. Say, let me see the letter. So he collected it and read through. He just tore it into shreds. I said, you don't write this kind of a letter. You are a recruit. You don't <laughs> know anything. Now take your paper mm. and um, your bureau. Mm. He actually dictated and did it in a way that is not as strong as the one that I wrote, <laughs> and then said, I'm ready to wait, even if it is for 10 years, this, 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 this. So I now sent the letter. Mm. She didn't reply, mm. but he now became my honorary consultant <laughs> and told me, just visit, visit her. Mm. Don't talk about it. Mm. Keep on visiting. But the point is, we eventually got married after six years. Wow. Um, so the man was the one that guided me rightly. Mm. Mm. And we must thank God mm. for mm. the way she has supported my ministry. Mm. That's great, sir. Thank you. Now, but, but we ended uh, your journey to becoming a bishop at Elisha. Now, um, why were you translated to Lagos? That question will be best answered by the Episcopal Synod. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, because um, I don't know. I, I have a feeling that my name came up okay. for the sea of Lagos. Okay. I think there were two other names. And whoever emerges having two thoughts mm. will, will have it. So I, I had two thoughts and and then I was translated to, oh, to Lagos. Then for the Archbishop, my name came up again. And at that time, it was Archbishop Province 1, covering mm -hmm. the whole of Yoruba area mm -hmm. and Bendel up to Asaba. Mm -hmm. So two names came up and I got it. Hmm. So I was supervising up to Asaba. Hmm. Later, the provinces were increased. Okay. And then we now have the province of Lagos, the hmm. province of uh, Bendel, hmm. uh, Undo, and so on. So okay. when that of Lagos came up, hmm. Then I finished as Archbishop for Province One, one. Okay. and my name came up. Mm. We were two, and I won. So when I won, for the second term mm. for the Province of Lagos, yeah. my name came up, and I won. So I had two terms for province of okay. Lagos and also had for province one. Mm. And um, when I became Archbishop for province one, yes, Primate Akeola became the primate at the same time. Okay. And the constitution says the most senior Archbishop becomes the dean. Mm. But I felt personally very strongly mm. that Akeola is a Yoruba man. Mm. I'm a Yoruba man. Mm. This church belongs to all of us. Mm. I didn't consult um, anybody. We were in Abuja. So I told the primate that before the benediction, I have an announcement. So before the benediction, I now told them that I wouldn't want to be the dean, that the next person would be from the east. So, Archbishop Anikwewa mm. eventually emerged. And what I did was to delay my presentation to July 29. Mm. So, he had his own presentation July 26. And that made him senior. Mm. So he became the dean. Mm. And um, when he now retired, I was not even, I've forgotten everything about it. When he now retired, mm. then I then got it. Okay. It's just a lesson for the new generation yeah. that there's a need to leave everything in the hands of God mm -hmm. and not to start to struggle to become this, to become that. Yeah. I knew some who were saying that it is my right and I should have been, mm. but they didn't ask me. They were only saying it, mm. but I was ready for an answer. <laughs> um, but today now, we thank God for what the Lord has now, done. And that takes me to this question, sir. Today, we now have what is mostly unpalatable to hear uh, in, the, in becoming bishop within the communion. Uh, people now, every priest now runs to become this and to become that. Where did we get it wrong? Let me say it, if a priest is ambitious, is having inordinate ambition, he may be wrecking himself. Okay. 
I knew of someone who became so ambitious that the BP rose to the high heavens hmm. and he had stroke hmm. and died. When God called you, he didn't bargain with you. He didn't sit with you to say you are going to be this, you are going to be that. Mm. He called you as a pastor, period. So a priest should just do his work and leave the rest to God. Running about, trying to see he could cut corners, mm. he's just wasting his time. Mm. I'm even happy now that the College of Bishops, they have taken a decision that when you retire as a bishop, you go to your house. Then the election of your successor will be done when you are not there. Oh, that's great. Super. There's no more successor bishop the thing will be done when you are not there. And there are miracles and miracles that are happening. Look at the election of my successor. I don't know whether you are the synod of this year. Yeah. I did mention it there that I've been praying that whoever is going to succeed me will go extra kilometers in the service of the Lord. And my successor has gone higher and higher than myself. Mm. He's done a lot within a short period of time. Mm. Look at the centenary city. Mm. Even the clergy. If you are not ready now to be highly spiritual, you won't fit in. Mm. He's gotten this international school in Apapa. The man is just swearing like an eagle. Mm. That's a worthy example. Mm. But for people to feel that you want to be a bishop and you are a non-performer, mm. it's better for God not to allow you. Mm. Rather, for you to come and make the church to retrogress. Mm. I think the bishops these days, they look for people who are very agile, spiritually, physically, and so on. Mm. And that is what is going to move the church forward. Mm. So if somebody is a priest and is not facing his work, mm. and is just... Uh, running elter skelter wanting to be what god did not plan for him he's going to end up in frustration mm -hmm. so and the wife of the priest too must also know that yeah look at uh, the wife of the bishop of lagos she's a professor mm. but she's never arrogant she's out for the population of the kingdom of heaven mm. and both of them they are like Priscilla and Aquila mm. when I was still there mommy the same I usually describe her as indefatigable yeah. inimitable and indomitable they all know in the houses mm. because we were working together I think they all, all know that in the Church of Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> People should just buckle up and work. Mm. But somebody is, um, you are a bishop uh, because somebody is uh, this, this. I, mm. The bishopric is not a compensation. Mm -hmm. It's not a compensation. And I don't owe anybody any apologies. Mm. For that, for saying that, we must get people that are highly spiritual mm. and are ready to do this work mm. so that the kingdom of God will be on. populated mm. and we will 
depopulate the kingdom of Satan. Mm. Now, now, Your Grace, before we r round up this episode, I wanted to ask you, uh, within the time you have gone out of service, uh, what have you missed about the Church of Nigeria? I won't <coughs> say I've missed much mm. because um, I'm relating with them. Even yeah. the new primate, we do relate. Mm. I have not missed because we, and you know, we are now in the age of um, ICT. Yeah. So I know what is going on in dioceses. In fact, mm. my, my diocese, where I have my roots, Ijebu diocese, mm. I followed bumper to bumper the ordination service okay. that they had Maybe last sure. Sunday. Mm. And uh, hardly will I have some bishops talking to me every day. Mm -hmm. They seek for my counsel, they ask for my advice, and I, I minimize my traveling. But not long ago, I was in the diocese on the coast for their synod. Mm -hmm. And I was also at the synod of um, Lagos. So I, I still relate with the bishops. Okay is I'm not incommunicado mm. at all. Mm. 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 Thank you, uh, Your Grace. <laughs> we still take another break and uh, uh, we come to round up this section with His Grace on this program. Stay tuned. Postfire is a program that treats controversial topics on diverse issues surrounding the church and the society. Technology drove the inflow or the outbursts of people having Bibles because of printing technology. Same way, the digital revolution has also made it possible for people to have Bibles in various formats in their hands. That's an Anglican, I believe in Anglicanism. And Anglicanism is standing on the triple of scripture, tradition, and reason. When we are about to read the Holy Gospel, all members Assuming the gospel are read from the phone and he says this is the gospel of Christ, you are likely to confuse a lot of people because people will be seeing phone in your hands. In the history of Holy Communion, we've never had that, we've never had that think, somebody think, contacted the disc from the other person. I think, before. sir, the, the truth is that when people are gathered together and anything happens, whether it is an earthquake or it is a disease or anything, it spreads faster and there are more fatalities. That's just what I'm talking about. The first evangelist in the Bible was a woman, the woman of Samaria that Jesus met at the well. Immediately this woman met Jesus. She went into the town and started telling everybody that come, come and see somebody who told me everything about myself. The women actually supported the ministry of Christ, supported the ministry of the apostles, but they were never called apostles. Thank you. This is The Reminences and uh, we've been talking with our Father in the Lord, uh, the Most Reverend Ademola Ademowo. Uh, Your Grace, just where you stopped before we took that short break, uh, uh, because I'm going to ask you this question because I am very sure with your experience and with your communication with current bishops, you understand what I'm saying. Uh, a, a lot of people are now agitating because, you know, I asked you a question of why you were translated from Malaysia to Lagos. Uh, today, the news we hear is people agitating to be transferred from their possibly current diocese to <laughs> a better one. I mean, in quotes, a better one, maybe financially buoyant dioceses. The second thing is people wanting the son of the soil. I mean, uh, becoming a bishop is a different ballgame, but people wanting uh, the son of the soil, if it is, a, it is not in the olden days, it is 
you are an Hebrew man, you can become a bishop in any part of the Hebrew land. But these days, an Anambra man cannot become a bishop in Hebrew states. Uh, what, what has brought us to this level? I will say that we need to go back to the practices of the early church. Mm. In the early church, Bible, prayer, and the sacraments were taken on board. Mm. We must not leave the word of God and be serving tables. It is very, very important. Mm. Take, for example, Bishop Boluma Kaye, he never thought he could come to Lagos. Where he was, he was moving mountains there. Mm. There was even a time there was not enough money and himself and the wife, they sold their jeep and gave the money to the douses. Mm. That was part of the practices of the early church. We must go back to it. Mm. And spirituality is important. When people are becoming carnal, then all this will be rearing their ugly head. Mm. We must go back to the practices of the early church and make sure that Bible, prayer, and the sacraments are taken on board. Worship, witness, witnessing to the Lord, mm. and sincere worship. Bishop Kale was out of Lagos. He was principal of Oyo. And they went and picked him. He never thought he could become a bishop. Mm. And they picked him from there and brought him to Lagos. Mm. Practical Christianity is a must. And uh, all these that you are talking about, mm. if people know whom they are serving, God will assign to them what he feels are due to them. Like when I was uh, Bishop of Lagos, we faced practical Christianity. There's a priest now who is um, in the cathedral. Don't let me mention his name. Mm. I didn't see him for a long time. And I was asking another priest, where is this man? And he said, he's gone to um, University of Ibadan for his master's degree. I said, yes, I permitted him. And then he now told me that his car is always breaking down around the Giri axis. And I said, eh. And I said, we are going to get him a car. And I took my checkbook, issued a check, and our priest contributed. And he told me there are some archdeacons who are sitting in the um, reception. And I, I told him, go and bring them. They came. And I said, before you tell me anything, you mount the pulpit. It's not just preaching theoretically. Mm -hmm. There is someone who is having this problem. We oversubscribed and got him a car. Mm -hmm. When he came, I sent for him and the wife. And we went downstairs and I said, that's your car. He burst into tears. He couldn't believe it. Mm. He cannot come and tell me that he needed a car. Mm. And we got him a car. Many like that. We were in a meeting. There's uh, Aderi Bigbe, he's a venerable. Ode Jide, who is now retired bishop. He was vicar of our saviors. His mm. suit, London suit. This Aderi Bigbe, his suit, mm. Something else. <laughs> All of a sudden, I said, these two people, go and stand there. Gentlemen, I need your comments. And they started to talk. They, ah, the suit of this one is, um, is uh, suffrages or House of Fraser <laughs> and so on. Say said, yes. Now this man, hmm. his car has been out of use for years. Today, we are going to get him a car. And I gave some money, personal, and we all contributed and bought this man a car. During my thanks 70th, mm. 
one highly placed was asking me, I don't want to give details. And he said, Baba, what do you want for your birthday? And I said, Dear Dickin of Vekwe, his car is, is not usable anymore. If you can get him a car, mm. use it to mark my birthday. Mm. And the car was bought. Mm. The car was bought. Mm. Brand new Toyota Corolla 2018 edition. Wow. These are practical things. Mm. And the car was bought for him. Mm. We, we have cases of widows. And we will contribute and go and build a house. There was somebody whose husband died as I was coming into Lagos. And then we contributed, built a house in Epe many years. So one day I went to that area and they were appealing to me to just pop in to say a word of prayer. I said, okay. And we got there. I was amazed. Hmm. Because it's a big house with a courtyard. Many like that. The point I'm making, practical Christianity must be taken on board. It's not to just preach on the pulpit. Mm -hmm. Theories. And then people are suffering. Mm -hmm. You're not ready to assist. Practical things. And when you do them, people pray for you. The prayers will come to pass. But if you do things that will make people to be cursing you, mm -hmm. the curses will come to pass. So if you are a priest, you want to come to Lagos, what for? When I was sent to Elisha, that is where God wanted me to be. I was in Adwe Kiti. I sat in the chancel there. And I just saw one priest moving up and down. So I asked uh, Archbishop Akinyemi, I said, this priest, what do you know about him? Oh, he's chaplain to the Archbishop. He's one of the best here. He didn't know what I had in mind. Mm. And I said, hey, are you sure? He said, yes. We went for the thanksgiving of the Archbishop and the enthronement of the new bishop. So I just called the new bishop. I said, you see this boy? Give him a letter of release. He's a reverend. So when we got outside, I sent for him. I said, I've asked for your release. You come into Lagos. He, he was, mm. he became a jelly. He wasn't sure. <laughs> so, days after, he came with a senior addict from Ekiti and said, I said, what are you still doing? Have you brought your belongings? The senior man said, he's not sure. He wanted him to verify from me. I said, it's already on my list. That was how he got to Lagos. Mm. Fantastic man. Mm. So, later, he became an archdeacon. Mm. He became... He became a canon first. He became an archdeacon in charge of a parish. Now he's in charge of an archdeaconry. Straight mm. as a ruler. Mm. There was another one I just asked. Where is this person now? Said he's somewhere in uh, Udon or so. I see. So I called his bishop. His bishop was in the UK. I said, that oh boy, could you release him? And he released him. Mm. He's doing well. Mm. The point I want to make, these are people who did not lobby. Mm. They didn't even know that I was going to ask them to come to Lagos. Mm. So these people going around, wanting to go to Lagos, wanting to go to places of greener pasture. Mm is very immoral it's not right and it doesn't mean that coming to lagos lagos too has villages there are villages in lagos that they cannot even pay the assessment of the priest hmm. the bishop is subsidizing 
So it doesn't mean that when you talk of Lagos, is uh, the is, place. Yes. Mm -hmm. There are areas that are just like <coughs> villages too, mm. outside Lagos. Mm. But it is not a good thing for one to be living where God wants you to be mm. and wanting to go where he doesn't want you to be. If you do that, you may be shooting yourself in the foot. Mm. Mm. Now, uh, Your Grace, that, uh, that now takes me to this last one, uh, <clears throat> still on church matters, uh, the, the issue of indiscipline. I missed number one, the laity. Uh, because uh, so there are some people that have thought that the laity contributes to ambitious mode of some priests. I mean, they are the one who push them to say, no, we are going to support you. Uh, uh, a bishop has said that uh, behind every priest you see misbehaving, <laughs> there are some laity <laughs> backing such person up. Uh, this indiscipline in the church, uh, is it part of lack of spirituality? It is. It is. Because those lay people, if they read their Bible, mm -hmm. they will know that what they are doing is wrong. When I was in Elisha, lay people, because I have spent nine years when Papa Falope was retiring mm -hmm. as a bishop, and lay people took it upon themselves mm. to say that he should have been he should have been made a canon. Mm. He should have made him a canon. Mommy and I we went to see the Owa Obukun of Ijesha land mm. and we were at table with him and he said, I'm even going to see the bishop because they've come here, people, members of your church, they've come here to protest <laughs> that you should have been made a canon. That was the end of the meal. <laughs> I had to be appealing to KBC that no, he shouldn't. He shouldn't do that. We dissuaded him from doing so. Mm. But if a priest is sitting and abetting, ah, mm. please, sir, if you can help us, so mm. that is what we are experiencing, mm. is not right. And members, when after synod or anything, mm. some people are preferred. Mm. They come to me and say, Alufa, Tino Ade, I never said I meant to eat. <laughs> Those people are Confucianists. Mm. Mm. Never will I say I meant to eat. I just walk away. Mm. In the Diocese of Lagos, we try to do a lot of biblical teaching. And the present bishop is doing a lot of that. In the Diocese of Lagos, you cannot see any priest dressing anyhow. Mm. If it is white cassock, it's white. They dress properly. They behave well. Mm. Because it's even another problem now. You go to some churches, it's not a service. It's a fundraising venture. <laughs> they can take collection more than seven times. Mm. Whereas, if you teach people, those collections that they are taking over and over again, and people will now break it into 200, 200, <laughs> they will know what to do. Mm. Rather than the service becoming something else, I, I always love to worship online with Osos, Lekki, our saviors, and other churches because it's highly spiritual. Highly spiritual. If you give them the spiritual milk, mm. you don't have to be preaching money yeah. at all. Even during the lockdown, I don't want to mention names of churches. Mm. During this lockdown, they even got more money than when there was no lockdown. Yeah. Because they were doing proper teaching. I think we need to go back 
to that, mm -hmm. back to the practices of the early church. We must get our priorities right, right. Hmm. and not keep on saying, hey, we want our son, is our son we want, mm -hmm. uh, busy chasing after shadows. Mm -hmm. We not help us. We go back to the practices of the early church. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, the better for us. When I go for a service, nobody needs to tell me to give. Mm -hmm. I know the new notes I keep there. And when it's time for giving, I do so. Because the teaching had been done. The teaching had been done. And when we do that, the better. We even have some churches now that um, they just ask you, they, they give you envelopes. And you put the money there. You know, this one is for Sunday offering. Mm. This one is for seed of faith. Mm. This one is for this one. This, and you just put and submit. Mm. Miracles and miracles are happening, mm. depending on the teachings. Mm. Lots and lots of things are happening. Mm. And I, I know that the Diocese of Lagos is a reference mm. yeah. because the bishop is highly spiritual. Yeah. He does a lot of fasting. Mm. We even have some priests now who, in some places, who had fasted, only God knew the time. <laughs> Fasting, praying through to victory, evangelism, all this must be taken on board. There was a time the Bishop of Lagos fasted for 90 days before he got to Lagos. And here, 40 days, 30 days. When he first came, he told us 30 days or so. Mm. I used to do like 20 days. But when he said 30 days, we had to fall in line. And when we got to the U.S., instead of breaking the fast, there were additional days. <laughs> and we had to wait. Mm. And when you fast, mighty, mighty things will be happening. Mm. He is a prophet. Mm. Bishops must be prophets. Mm. They must prophesy. Rather than I want, I want my, our son to be our bishop. Mm. Well, we want this one to be this. Mm. Even now that um, they are going to be choosing, when the uh, bishop who is retiring is no more there, I think it's going to help a lot. Mm. A lot. Mm. And the present primate is starting well. He's doing well. And I, I, we pray for him and pray that his tenure will be full of monumental achievements. Mm. Thank you, Your Grace. Uh, let me take you on this international issue of uh, lesbianism and uh, homosexuals. I know you were fully part of this uh, uh, issue when it was uh, reigning in the international community within the Anglican Church especially. Uh, what do you think is going on with the Western world? I strongly believe that lesbianism, homosexuality, all these, they are a misnomer. Mm. Just mm. the Nigerian church and other dioceses, other provinces mm. that are not with them yeah. in that regard, yes. they are for biblical orthodoxy. Mm. We bow to biblical scrutiny. Mm. And that is it. It's a misnomer. Mm. I mean, I don't know how you can ask two males to come to church and you join them in a wedding. <laughs> Are they not reading the Bible? Mm. Do they want to change what the Bible has stipulated? Mm. 
is a man and a woman. Mm. That's what the Bible is saying. And then you bring two females and you say they are, you are joining them. Mm -hmm. It's abnormal. Mm. And there is no going back on that. We're holding on to the biblical principle, what the Bible stipulates. Mm. As far back as 1990, Mommy and I we were visiting the Diocese of Michigan. And, he, and somebody was greeting me when we had a get together. The person greeting me dressed like a she. Hmm. But the voice <laughs> is the voice of a he. Hmm. You know, when a man speaks, you can know. So we greeted, then I then moved. We were having tea time. I then moved to one side and called somebody and said, Who is that person? Say, Yes. The fellow went and changed to a she from a he. Mm. I was taken aback. Mm. I never looked at that side till we finished. Mm. To even see the shadow. God has created you mm. as a he. Mm. You now changed to a she. It's madness. Mm. Mm. But we have taken our own stand mm. and there's no going back. Uh, but, but what, what I used to say it in the, in the house of bishops before I retired that if we change our posture, our members will stone us, mm. in quotes. That's what I used to say. So, I mean, it's not negotiable. Mm. Is not debatable. Mm. But, but, but what can we do as an evangelistic uh, way of reviving the West? They are not ready for now. Mm. They are not. They are just playing along with the government. Mm. What the government is saying is what they are doing. doing. You even have um, some churches now that had been sold. Mm. And they have, um, they are now pop houses. It's unfortunate. Mm. Unfortunate. So, Your Grace, uh, as What of those up? evangelicals, let me just add, add that. Okay, evangelicals mm. in America, yeah. in Nigeria, like. Um, Redeemed Christian Church and these others and um, others in America. Mm. Their posture is solid. You can't see them talking of this nonsense mm. at all. At all. You see them on the television. They, they are standing on their decision mm. based on the Bible yes. is only these orthodox that are derailing mm. like uh, the Episcopal Church of America Church of England mm. and some of them but all these others like um, uh, in America for example you have um, different evangelical um, churches yes. They are not shifting their posture. Mm -hmm. And I, I was in Washington when a friend of mine was saying that uh, um, they had communion. Mm. And they threw it open to every Dick, Tom, and Harry. And I said, things have gone a wire <laughs> with these people. <laughs> it's funny. Mm. Funny. And they say, in the name of our ancestors, mm. And they talk of our father, mother in heaven. It's heresy. Mm. It's sacrilegious. The only thing, the faith that I had held on to, I'm not going to cheat. Mm. 
I will hold on to it mm. till the very end. Mm. If anybody wants to go crazy, is that person's funeral? Mm. Is that person's cup of tea? Mm. The one I'm holding on to. Mm. No compromise. Yeah. Mm. Thank you, Your Grace. Uh, now, as we round up, would you like to share with us, maybe you have one regret when, in, in your ministry life? I don't have. Okay. Whatever comes my way, I know God takes care of them. And um, he has a hand in whatever happens to me. And beyond the tunnel, there's always a light, there's always a hope. Mm. So I don't have any regret at all because mm. my my life is securely in the hands of the Almighty. He, mm. he knows me by my name. The air of my head is numbered. Mm. I'm closer to him more than my jugular vein. Mm. <laughs> and uh, uh, you've mentioned that uh, the new primate is doing well. So can we have your advice to church leaders as a whole? No, it's just for have them to cooperate with him. Okay. And for them to work together mm. so that the Anglican Church will go from strength to strength and from glory to glory. Mm. And I'm also happy with the Dean because both of them, they work together mm. and that's a very, very dependable person. Mm. Archbishop Lamido mm. um, is as constant as a northern star. Mm. Is never a chameleon mm. and is never fickle minded, mm. straight as a ruler. Mm. So that one too will be able to be of assistance to mm. him. They are the archbishops too, they are there, they are mm. doing well, mm. and it's, it's fine. They, mm. they... Okay, now, uh, uh, Your Grace, let's look at what is happening in Nigeria. There has been protests after the Independence Day, 68th anniversary of Nigeria, and there has been protests. Uh, the young uh, lads are out there on the streets protesting. Uh, somebody said uh, these are uh, as a result of the failures of fathers. Yes, I must say that we had a serious bite of the protests mm. in Lagos mm. because they were barricading different parts of Lagos. So I wouldn't say that I I didn't uh, know what has been going on. Mm. And I'm happy that the president has instructed the inspector general of police yeah. as to what to do. Mm. And SARS has been prescribed mm. because before then a lot of terrible things had happened even the only of ife i read it yesterday because as far as i'm concerned my hobbies are reading writing walking and so on mm. so i read a lot mm. he, he wrote that his own 25 year daughter was harassed and was nearly killed. Mm. 30 of these SARS people mm. were on her when she, she was going to the airport. Mm. And only this morning, a lady who is um, married to a, a Colombian uh, person brought the child to come and have a feel of Nigeria. Mm. And they chased after her and she was nearly killed many many like that people narrating tale of woes mm. but SARS has been proscribed we only hope that the one that will take over there won't be a repeat but the youth seems not to trust the government no they we have to start from somewhere okay if the thing has been cancelled then they have to wait and see what is going to happen. Uh, yes, but uh, some people... But going on like... with all this now, 
what is going to happen? Uh, they said this is just like the fourth time that the same SARS has been disbanded, has been suspended, uh, using different uh, terminologies. Yes, but what do they want now? Because the thing has been cancelled and the government is saying we are going to come up mm. with an alternative. Y yes, that's what I'm saying, Your Grace. I, I mean, there is a paper, a tribune, who, that, that captioned the, the headlines as uh, SARS banned four times in four years. Okay. I mean, so within 2017 and now, there has been pronunciation of disbanding this same SARS. So the reason for the continuation... No, we are appealing process. to the president okay. to ensure that there is no repeat. Okay. Because the way the youths are going now, they are becoming restive. Mm. And there's the need to take action decisively mm. Mm. before things go out of hand. Because already there are the people in some countries outside this nation. They are joining. Yes. And we need to be careful so that there is no mighty conflagration mm. in the country. Mm. Mm. Now, uh, Your Grace, um, the nation as a whole, uh, I mean, Nigeria is going through a lot. Uh, how will you rate the effectiveness of this government within the No, last... I'm not a politician, but <laughs> I just want to say that um, the situation in the country yes. has left very much to be desired. There is abject poverty and misery. A lot of people are languishing. Mm. Some cannot even feed once a day. Mm. These are facts staring at us in the face. Mm. There are people that are just there. They don't have anything at all. They are suffering. Mm. There are people who have no jobs. There are people who can't even pay for their house rents anymore. There is a need for the government to give this situation a human face. It's not to just say uh, we are dishing out bags of rice. Mm. When you give someone a bag of rice, for how long? Within a short time, it's going to finish. Mm. There ought to be definite arrangements. And the government has been taking loans, which generations yet unborn will not be able to pay. Mm. That in itself is a major problem. Mm. And there are people that are badly affected. Before the Treasury, they, they, they tell me, they talk to me, Treasury bills before mm. used to be 13%. 12% mm. and people are benefiting. Mm. Now is 1%. Mm. If they give you 2%, that's for the bourgeoisie. <laughs> people who have the money. Mm. If you don't have the money, it's 1%. Mm. So people are just on the floor. Mm. The government needs to put smiles on the faces of the masses. Mm. There are people who have a lot of money, they don't feel it. But poor, poor, poor people, there's a need not to be sending them to their graves too early. Mm. Because if they don't have anything, death is imminent for such people. Because um, even when they go to the hospitals, they tell you, deposit so much before we can even attend to you. Hmm. And they don't have the money. So they may have to carry them back home. Hmm. And even if relations contribute, by the time the person is well, is going to be looking for ways and means to return. of returning the money. So there's the need to ensure that 
Nigerians are not sent to their graves too early. Mm. And those who travel abroad, it's not that when you travel abroad that everything is rosy there. Mm. Because I'm a researcher. If you travel and your salary is, um, you are lucky if they are paying you 2,000 pounds every month. That's a big money. Mm. Because those on 3,000 pounds, those are people on top. But if you are paid 2,000 pounds, 2,000 pounds, you have to rent a house, accommodation. Mm. That's about 1,000 pounds mm. out of two. Mm. Then you have to maintain your car. You have to eat. Mm. By the time you do all that, by 21st of the month, the money is gone. Mm. You now have to use your credit card to be taking some advanced something. Mm. And within 60 days, you must wipe it off. We have people who left this country from January to December, they are living on credit card. Mm. For how long? It's even worse. There was a day I was walking along uh, Tottenham Court Road because I usually go there, go into electronic shops to want to see the latest mm. and receive some tutorials as to Absolutely. how best I can improve on my computer education acumen. Mm. So, this fellow just emerged. I knew he's a Nigerian, and he greeted me, and then said, please sir, can I have something? I have not eaten for regularly for some time. Mm. I looked at him, so I now gave him 100 pounds. 100 pounds in the UK is a lot of money. Mm. He thanked and thanked me profusely. Mm. So when I finished, I then came out and then I was walking down the street. I didn't know he was following me. All of a sudden, he caught up with me and then greeted me and said, please, I would like to have your name and your telephone number. I said, no, I'm sorry. My number is restricted. Mm. And what I did for you, I just did it for God. I don't have to give you my name. He was persuading me. I said, no, that's a no-go area. Then I now caught him. When he was persuading me, I said, why don't you go back home to Nigeria? Even, even if it is farming, you can be doing. And the man told me he's left Nigeria many, many years ago. Mm. He cannot go back. Because if he's promising me to go back, he doesn't want to deceive me. Mm. He's there. His mm. people in Nigeria will think we have somebody in, in London <laughs> and they will be mounting pressure okay. on him to assist them. Mm. He himself is being assisted. He's been assisted. <laughs> so mm. I know that it's not only in Nigeria that poverty is um, written boldly mm. on the faces of people. Mm. Those in UK, US, and so on, they are just struggling. Mm. And there are people now, even in the UK, that had been sacked. They can't get money to pay for their house rent. Mm. There are people who had been sacked. They can't get money to pay for the mortgage of 20, 25 years. Mm. They may have to take the house from them and uh, sell off. Nobody knows. Mm. So I don't want us to feel that it's only in Nigeria that people so. are languishing. Mm. It's all over. Mm. But that of Nigeria is getting worse. Mm. Worse. When mm. you go out now, people approach you. And, and start to beg for money. Mm. When you are inside the vehicle, you see some people by the side of the um, door 
trying to say some things, even when you, you are reading something, they have the audacity to knock, to, knock. <laughs> to catch your attention. Mm. That what are you reading? Mm. I'm here. Help me. Mm. And then you probably give few naira notes, but mm. that will not suffice. Yeah. We need to pray more for divine intervention. Mm. Because even those in government, they are trying, but we need to pray more. I mean, like Lagos State, the governor here is, is doing very well. He's giving every situation a human face. Mm. But how many governors like that in our country? How many? Mm. Your Grace, before we leave National Asia, are you in support of restructuring? And what is your own definition? I don't want to dabble into politics. Mm. Those, who, those who know the technical know-how should address that. All I know is that if at the federal level yes. there should be balanced distribution of various portfolios. Okay. Let me put it that way. It shouldn't be one-sided. Okay. If, for example, the Chief Justice is from a particular area, the inspector general, the, the, the thing should balance. That I know. Mm. I mean, you can't fault that. You cannot fault it. Mm. <laughs> but restructuring, people are talking about it, that it has to be done. Um, and many people are in support. But by the virtue of my own position, people who have the technical know-how, they should work out what they know is good for our country, and so be it. Mm. Um, I'm not a politician, and I don't uh, even, if there are people now saying they want a state for Yoruba or something. Yes, a republic. A republic. <laughs> I just look at all these things mm. and start to wonder how realistic this is. Mm. Even when you don't have a republic, a so-called republic, the whole place is in shambles. Mm. The roads are horrible. Mm. Very horrible. And then you now want to have a republic. I said, what is happening? What's going on? <laughs> mm. Okay, sir. The, as we close, uh, what's your happiest moment in life? Being a Christian, getting closer to the Lord all the time, I wake up in the morning, talk to Him. Um, somebody came many, many years ago and told me that God spoke to him to go and see me and to deliver a prophecy. And I say, you, I don't understand what you say. This morning, me and God, we still talked. <laughs> so which prophecy are you bringing? Is anti-climax. Go. After some time, I was an archdeacon then. He came back and he told me that he said it's from Oshu, which is not far from Elisha. Mm. and he needed money for transport. So I then said, why didn't you say that? <laughs> and you coming here thinking you can deceive me. Mm. I said, the relationship between me and God is cordial. So I gave him some money for transport and allow him to, to go. Um, a happy family man. Mm. And um, mommy and I, we we are close together. She does her own work in the morning. She's done her own work this morning. Mm. And I do mine in the evenings. And we are happy together. And it's, it's nice. We sing together. We pray together. Mm. We have the prayer of agreement before mm. we go to bed. 
Mm. Those are happy moments. Mm. And the children, they are doing very well. Mm. And we thank God. Uh, so uh, we want to ask, how many of your children are into ministry now? Uh, well, one. Okay. One. Mm. And the others are, they are also doing well. We okay. have only one girl. Okay. Um, and the remaining four uh, males. Okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much for this long, uh, uh, interesting time with you, sir. Thank you very much. We hope that uh, God will continue to bless and keep you strong and strong enough. Thank you in very Jesus much. In Jesus' name. Amen. And I must thank you for what you are doing. Yes. Sir Fulu Olamiti has done a lot with the ACNN. Mm. It's, it's, it's as if that is his breath. <laughs> and he's doing a lot there. Yes, and I also appreciate what you are doing with your staff. Mm -hmm. because you are making a lot of progress Thank and God you, will continue to bless your work Amen. and be with you in all your endeavors. Amen. Amen. You have our prayers. We will right. continue to support you. Thank you, sir. Thank uh, you. Your Grace, we would like you to pray for our viewers uh, as we close this session. Heavenly Father, our joy today knows no bounds for the dawn of a new day and for all the blessings that come along with it. We got started with this year as if it was yesterday. You've been with us. COVID-19 did not affect us. We've been taking absolute control. We pray, Father, that day by day, we will continue to rely on you. We will continue to put our trust in you. We pray, Father, for ACNN, that the great work they are doing will blow them. Lord, we pray for... Sir Fulu Olamiti and pray for the general manager and pray for all the members of staff that goodness and mercy will follow them on a daily basis. Amen. We pray for our primate, all the archbishops, the bishops, the laity, the clergy, that day by day they will continue to soar like the eagles. Lord, we pray that on a daily basis you will continue to support us you will continue to provide for our needs. As we look forward to 2021, it will be a year of proclamation, Amen. a year of jubilation. Amen. Lord, we pray that monumental achievements will be our portion. Amen. Spiritual and material profitability will be our portion. Amen. We rely on you. We will never be put to shame. Amen. Our country beyond the tunnel there will be light, there will be hope, there will be a better tomorrow. Mm. Thank you, Father. Thank you, In Lord. Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Uh, and that's it, uh, viewers, on this meeting edition of Reminences with uh, Father, the Most Reverend uh, Debola Ademo, who has been with us for quite a long period, and I'm sure you've enjoyed this. Uh, I hope that uh, when we call back again, Your Grace, you'll be available for us to give us from this wealth of experience. Thank you and thank you profusely. Until next edition, I remain Korede Akitunde. God bless you. <laughs>